Welcome back to Igneous Metamorphic Petrology. This video will begin our two video discussion on metamorphic reactions. Reactions are always responsible for introducing or consuming mineral phases during metamorphism. The classical notation of an isograd is that a line in the field demarks the first appearance of a new mineral phase or one that progresses up metamorphic grade. The classical isograd concept is still useful in the field, but if we understand reactions that produce minerals, the physical conditions under which the reactions occur, and the variables effect affecting them, we can better understand metamorphic processes. With experimental and theoretical data on mineral reactions, we can locate a reaction's PTX space and constrain the conditions under which a particular metamorphic rock forms. Some advocate using both field-based and reaction-based isograds. We will review the various types of metamorphic reactions and discuss what controls them. Single component polymorphic phase transformations, such as the polymorphs of silica, aluminum silicate, or calcium carbonate, which is shown in the figure, are the simplest systems to deal with. Because the phases are essentially fixed compositions, the transformation depends entirely on temperature and pressure only, and are minimally affected by compositional changes. Let's look at a pure calcium carbonate system that's stable in a metamorphic environment. Calcium should occur at pressures below the equilibrium curve as shown in figure 26.1, with aragonite stable above the curve. This explains why aragonite is a stable calcium carbonate polymorph in typical blue shift facies, and why calcite is stable at lower pressure facies. This explanation holds true for essentially all polymorphic transformations, and provide the presence of one or more polymorph may conveniently be used to set limits on pressure and temperature. There are very small differences in Gibbs free energy between polymorphs, even at pressure and temperatures that are far from the tie lines. This is due to small changes in entropy, or delta G, and the volume for most polymorphic phase transformations. As a result, there is very little driving force for a reaction to proceed, and crystals of one polymorph may remain metastable relics as a stability field of another polymorph. Coins existing polymorphs may therefore represent non equilibrium states reflecting overprinting. Often, by carefully observing the textures, you can distinguish partial replacement and metastable coexistence from true stable equilibrium grain boundaries. Heitinen, in 1956, reported that all three aluminosilicate polymorphs are stable in northern Idaho, and proposed that the, poly the metamorphic events in that area occurred near an invariant point. What is more likely is that silimate partially silimate partially replaced kyanite during prograde events near the kyanite silimate boundary, and andalusite replaces kyanite during the later events at lower pressure. This overprinting is independent of other minerals present, fluids, or other factors. Another complication results from minor substitutions of other elements which de deviates the system away from the pure chemical formula of the polymorph. For example, iron 3 plus is often found in the aluminosilicate polymorphs, with more iron 3 plus in andalusite compared to kyanite or silmonite. The effect of the substitution is the enlargement of the andalusite stability field at the expense of kyanite and silmonite. The effect is typically on the order of about 30 degrees Celsius shift, which is too small to account for the natural andalusite to silmonite transition. As a result, andalusite plus muscovite, quartz, biotite, and others will transition to silmonite at a transition grade regardless of other phases. Traditionally, the presence of one of these phases, such as andal andalusite, was used to indicate low pressure metamorphic conditions. Two coexisting polymorphs in a single rock would mean that the metamorphic peak along the univariate boundary curve, if the system's at equilibrium. This would allow for independent estimates of either pressure or temperature with other parameters estimated from the equilibrium curve. For example, if we take kyanite and silmonite observed together, and the pressure is estimated from geobarometry, we can estimate a pressure of 0 0.5 gigapascals, and we can estimate a temperature of 560 degrees centigrade. If all three aluminosilicate polymorphs are found stable coexistence, then we can suggest the conditions that the invariant point, or where the temperature is at 500 degrees centigrade, and the pressure is at 0.38 gigapascals. 
It may be better for us to think that the coexistence of two polymorphs may actually be the result of a very low Gibbs free energy of the transition reaction with one phase coexisting as a metastable phase as a transition of overstepped with rising temperature. We'll discuss this further. Exolution reactions, which is our first reaction we're going to discuss, occurs when solid solution minerals series encounters the typical solvus, typically during the cooling or decompression. Essentially, exolution is the process of unmixing of a solid solution mineral series. We discussed this reaction without realizing it when we discussed exolution laminate earlier this semester and last semester in mineralogy. An interesting result of this reaction is that, that we have not discussed is that the exolving minerals need not be part of the same family. For example, garnets are commonly exolved from, from high pressure pyroxenes with high aluminum concentrations. When the pyroxenes are undergoing decompression occurring during uplift. Exolution laminate reactions result in the, in the development of crystallographic oriented rods or laminae in the exolving host or if diffusion is favorable, distinct separated grains. Imagine an idealized field area of steeply dipping metamorphosed politic sediments that strike directly up metamorphic grade. The bulk chemistry of each unit is homogeneous, but differs somewhat from the other units in the area. We can compare how each of these compositions behave as grade of metamorphism increasing increases by walking within each unit a long strike towards the higher grade. The garnet in field isograd varies from unit to unit, occurring at different grades. This is occurring for one of two reasons, assuming that the rock represents equilibrium mineral assemblages as a result of continuous reactions. Such contrasting compositions that the garnet reaction is different. For example, Garnets and some politic pelites may be created by an unbalanced reaction of chlorite plus muscovite plus quartz yielding garnet plus biotite plus water. Whereas in more iron rich potassium poor pelites, garnets might be generated by an unbalanced reaction involving chlorides, such as chlorite plus chloride plus quartz yielding garnet plus water. Offsets in a particular field isograd when based in different reaction isograds are often relatively large. In the blank unit that occurs in the center of the map, garnet isn't even created at all. This could be a magnesium rich sandy p light or even a quartzite or marble. The second option is the reaction on which the isograd is based is the same in each unit, but is a continuous reaction. And its location is sensitive to the composition of the solutions whether it be solid or fluids that are involved. The offset this creates is an isograd usually more subtle than for reason one, but in some cases they can be substantial. We will concentrate on the second reason here for most of our discussion. Isograds offset due to the, due to the first option are relatively obvious, but to understand the effects of the solutions on the temperature of an isograd, Let's go back to a familiar system, the four-strike Fairlight system. Suppose that we want to record the melt-in isograd, or the first appearance of melt in the four-strike Fairlight system. The temperature at which the melt occurs depends upon the magnesium iron ratio of the bulk composition that we plan to melt. If we plan to melt a system that has 30% four-strike, the resulting melt will have will have about 8% magnesium oxide and the melt is generated at approximately 1320 degrees centigrade. If we start with a rock that has 70% forestrite and a melt composition of 35 weight percent magnesium oxide, melting occurs at 1525 degrees centigrade. This will cause a shift in the melt in field isograd of about 265 degrees. This is a good time to remind ourselves of the differences between a continuous and a discontinuous reaction, as this concept is essential for metamorphic petrology. Discontinuous reactions occur at a constant temperature where there is no degree of freedom according to the phase rule. In our forced right example, at constant pressure, 
in a pure system, the number of components, or C, is 1. But when forced write begins to melt at 1890 degrees, phi is 2. So that phi equals C minus phi plus 1, is, which is isobaric, will be e 0. This means that the temperature will have to remain constant until all the forced write is consumed by the melting reaction. We consider this reaction discontinuous since it occurs without changing temperature. In the two component system where we have forced rate at 30% melt, melting will occur at 1320 degrees C, but is not complete until 1535 degrees C, at which time the liquid composition becomes equal to the bulk composition. In this case, the reaction is considered continuous because C equals 2 and F equals 1, or the system has a degree of freedom allowing for temperature to vary and the composition of the liquid and solid to change along the liquidus and solidus respectively. In light of this, discontinuous reactions are actually univariant, F equals 1 on the PT phase diagrams, because pressure and temperature are not independent, but are constrained to follow the geothermal gradient, or the PTT path, and the PTT the PT path crosses the reaction at a single point. In other words, because temperature depends on pressure in metamorphic environments, a degree of freedom is lost. In a pure system, a reaction should occur and run to completion when one of the reactants is consumed at a single grade. Continuous reactions occur when F is greater than 1 and the reactants and the products coexist over a temperature, or grade interval. So, if the reaction is continuous, the mineral phase is found together in the rock, in this case chlorite, muscovite, quartz, garnet, and biotite, will be present over a range in grade, above the garnet in isograd and compositions of one or more of the phases will vary across the interval with the proportion of solid solution end members changing until one of the reactants disappears with increasing grade. Figure 26.9 illustrates a continuous metamorphic reaction of an isobaric temperature composition for magnesium reaction simplified to eliminate potassium and approximate a two-component system analogous to a forced right phthalate melting reaction, as we just discussed. The reaction is discontinuous in the pure iron and pure magnesium system, but continuous in the iron-magnesium system, since the components increase by one as a result, and as a result, so does F. As with the melting scenario, the absolution temperature of the first appearance of the new phase, in this case garnet, as well as the width of the temperature interval with which the reactants and products coexist varies with the iron-magnesium ratio reaction of the bulk rock composition. In a pure iron and pure magnesium system, the reaction occurs at a single temperature represented by the vertical thin dashed line on the isobaric diagram and the thin dashed reaction curve lines on the fixed composition diagram. The lines are sharp. Univariant reactions cross at a single metamorphic grade. The mixed magnesium iron system reactions become continuous as represented by the thick dashed lines in the isobaric diagram. The garnet in isograd for a rock with, with a composition of, of a magnesium number of 0 0.05 occurs at point T1. Chlorite is not consumed until T2. And between T1 and T2, the reaction of chlorite plus quartz plus muscovite yields garnet plus water plus biotite, and is considered continuous, with all five minerals present and chlorite generally being consumed as more garnet is produced. Each phase will also become more magnesium rich over time. On the PTT and the PT phase diagram, the reaction for magnesium number of 0 0.05 is shown in the light purple and illustrates the same reaction between T1 and T2. A more realistic scenario for this rock would involve a PTT path with a positive slope rather than isothermal, 
but the T1 and T2 will remain along the boundaries of the light purple field, and magnesium content in the phases will increase as chloride is consumed. Together, the isobaric, or Tx, and the fixed composition, or PT diagram, constitutes a rudimentary Tx or PT pseudosection, which are grids designed to show the reaction for specific rock compositions. More specifically, a pseudosection allows the depiction of fields or of stability of a particular mineral assemblage, rather than showing the univariate and member reactions so common in PT grids. The isograds offset in the map figure from earlier in the, in the video and may thus reflect differences in bulk composition of magnesium from one unit to another and the continuous reaction proceeds across a variable width with the garnet zone immediately above each isograd segment. It is therefore accepted that when a petrologist uses the term continuous reaction, they are referring to reactions involving solid solution series. Ion exchange reactions involve the reciprocal exchange of components between two or more minerals. While this can occur with either anions or cations, petrologists have concentrated on cation exchange and that for, therefore that will be our focus. An example of an exchange reaction is anite plus pyro equaling phlogopite or almondine, where iron and magnesium exchange occurs between the garnet, the pyrope and almondine, and the biotite, anite and phlogopite. Ion exchange reactions are conveniently expressed in terms of opposing pure end member components, and an equilibrium constant is fitted to actual compositions. Although continuous reactions may also involve shifting iron magnesium ratios in the reacting phases, the modal proportions of the phases also change as a continuous reaction progresses. In ion exchange reactions, the modal amounts of phases involved remain constant, only the composition changes as a result of exchange. Oxidation reduction reactions, or redox reactions, involve changes in the oxidation state of ions or ion complexes that naturally occur in more than one state, such as iron 2 plus versus iron 3 plus. A simple redox reaction is illustrated by the equation of 6 Fe2O3 equals 4 Fe3O4 plus O2, illustrating hematite and magnetite. In this reaction, two-thirds of the Fe3 plus in the hematite is reduced to iron 2 plus in the magnetite, and half as many O2 ions are oxidized to O0 to compensate for the, and maintain electrical neutrality. If we can add a component of water and create an Fe O2 H2O system, to allow for oxygen pressure to vary, the occurrence of three phase at equilibrium requires that F equals 3 minus 3 plus 2 equaling 2. Because hematite and magnetite are pure phases, only pressure, temperature, and oxygen pressure are variable. And at a set pressure, the solid assemblage of hematite and magnetite requires F equals 1. And the assemblage have as what is referred to as an oxygen buffer, where imposed changes in oxygen concentration are compensate for shifting the relative proportions of hematite and magnetite at equilibrium. We can relate this to oxygen fugacity or the thermodynamically effective pressure between the real and ideal behavior. Two more oxygen buffering reactions are included in figure 2610 and are magnetite plus quartz equaling phaolite which is referred to as the FMQ, and phaolite equaling iron plus quartz, QIF. Fluids are capable of dissolving a variety of chemical components as they equilibrate with rocks and minerals. These components are garnered by the reactions between fluids and minerals, and the dissolved species are generally maintained in equilibrium with the solid, solids, unless the flow rate is too fast or the fluids are buffered by some larger external reservoir. A well-known reaction of this type is the hydrolysis weathering reaction of potassium feldspar, where potassium feldspar plus an aqueous species equals kaolinite plus an aqueous species. 
Other fluid rock reactions are also known, such as alvinization reactions of sodium, potassium felspars, and ocean crust. Many metamorphic reactions involve aqueous constituents. We can treat such reactions in terms of the phase rule and the intensive variables of pressure, temperature, and concentration of the reactant species. This concludes our first video on metamorphic reactions. Our next video will explore a few more reactions and bring in the phase changes for the high pressure, low temperature metamorphic facies series.